Hey everybody, uh, this video is going to be about generators and iterators in JavaScript. But before we get into that, I got a lot of good feedback on the video series so far and uh, it was mostly positive, which is really awesome. But the two things that I heard a few times were one, that the terminal uh, contrast was a little bit hard to see. So I set my terminal to this like very um, high contrast, like black on white. Um, so I hope that's easier to read. If anyone's still having problems, let me know and I can switch it up. The other thing was um, that it was a bit confusing me hopping around Vim all the time. So for the rest of the series and probably the videos going forward, uh, I've switched over to Atom.js, um, which is free, uh, a project by GitHub. So you can head over to their website and download that if you want to follow along that way. Um, so I hope that makes it easier. Uh, Alright, cool. So moving on, uh, we're going to talk about <clears throat> generators and iterators and their relationships. And so basically the kind of mile high view is that generators are a special type of function in JavaScript now uh, that can kind of pause and resume state, uh, which makes them really, really nice for doing like asynchronous code and things like that. Um, there's a lot to explain, so I think it would be best to just kind of jump into the code um, and go from there. So I'm going to make a new file called generators.js, and I'm probably going to be using uh, let to declare variables, so I'm going to go ahead and declare use strict at the top. Okay, so let's make a really basic generator um, example so we can kind of get started. You can tell generators are being declared because after the function keyword, you'll see an asterisk like this, or you'll write an asterisk like that. Uh, so let's make a function called never ending. And um, yeah, we'll go ahead and have a variable like index, let index equal zero. And then we're going to do something like make an infinite loop, right? So we'll do like a while true like this, and we'll do yield uh, index and increment it. So basically, the new things here are the asterisk and this yield keyword. These are the two things that are specific to generators. Um, to kind of go over the syntax from there, you would do something like let gen equal and you'd instantiate the generator. So equal never ending. Um, and then you can kind of call it here. So a couple of things that I think are worth mentioning right off the bat. Um, the relationship between generators and iterators um, is such that this is a, a generator function declaration. This isn't the generator itself. This is a generator function, has an asterisk, and needs to yield something. And by yielding something, that is returning a generator. So this is a generator function that's returning a generator. So we're not just sending a zero back here, as we'll see in a minute. We're actually sending an object, a generator object. Um, and generator objects are such because they confirm to the conform to the iterator protocol. So just kind of to cover that again, uh, a generator function yields a generator, and to be a generator, you need to be iteratable. So you need to be uh, an it uh, conform to the iterator protocol. Um, that's not super important. That's just like what the words mean. Um, but let's get into some code examples so we can understand how these are useful. So one of the methods, probably the most important one that you can call with generators is the next method. So now that we have our generator function and we've instantiated it here, we can do something like console.log gen.next. Um, and so what we're going to... Uh, Go over into our terminal and run it. Node generators. Um, and so what we see, like I was mentioning before, we don't just get a zero back. Like if you had a regular function, uh, you know, that returned index uh, plus plus, you would just get zero as an integer. We're actually getting a JavaScript object back, and it has two keys: uh, the value and done. And so done is an indication of whether or not that generator has more iterations left inside of it which is pretty useful. Um, and so, for example, you could kind of now console log like three times or something like that, and we can clear this, and then we can run node on it again, and it'll just each time keep iterating one, two, all that, never done. Uh, if we wanted to change this from an infinite loop to like while index is less than two or something like that, 
and then go back and run it again, we would see that it iterates these two times and then it returns a value of undefined, but the important thing is it returns done is true. So then if you wanted to like, um, you know, iterate through as many times as you could or whatever, you could do that like in a while loop, say, uh, you know, like while gen dot next dot done, um, you know, is equal to false or whatever. And then you can go ahead and console log in there. And then we can go back and run this again. And we'll see that it just goes until it's done and then doesn't go anymore. Um, this is probably would be better as a do while loop because you want to run it the first time where it's zero. Um, so this is kind of like skipping the zero and only logging the one. But uh, you could also just if you wanted to see a, a more clear example. So we console log it and then while it's not done, keep console logging it. Um, so we get zero and then we get this one where it is done, console log. Um, okay, cool. So that's kind of the basic idea. I think some important things that are really cool are one, it's important to note that here on line 11, where we instantiate the generator function, it doesn't actually run through. So after we instantiate here, you might think that index would be set to 1, um, but it, it's not. The other thing that's kind of important is that, um, oops, is that it maintains state. Um, so if you, you know, do a console log like this, and then you console log doing other stuff, and then you go ahead and at a later point console log it again. Um, it's pretty neat that you don't have to write any special code. It keeps like the closure over the value and it keeps state. Um, so it, it doesn't start again at zero just because you went off and did other things. So I think that's pretty cool. Um, you can also, let's see, at any time, um, kind of the only other thing you can do besides calling um, next on a generator is you can throw. Um, so you could like at any time, you know, like throw like this, um, and then you could be like, you know, a new error, oops, something like that. Um, so you can throw an error, or you can keep calling next. Um, and then I guess the last thing that I wanted to talk about, which is is pretty wild, but I really like, and I'm gonna steal an example from uh, Mozilla's MDN, is that you can call generators from inside generators. Um, and much like you would declare a function with a star to be a generator function, you can declare a yield with a star to be a generator yield. Um, so let's walk through this example. Um, okay, so they start off with a generator function called another generator, and it takes a value, oops, of i. Okay, so what this is gonna do is it's gonna yield i plus one, then it'll yield i plus 2, and then it'll yield i plus 3, something like that. Okay, so from here, you could call it with, let's say, 10, and it would yield 11, and then 12, and then 13, right? Um, but then down here, they have another generator function called generator. This also takes an i. And what this one does is it yields whatever that i value is, and then it does our special yield. It yields to another generator, um, passing in its i value. And then, yeah, yeah, let's say it does something else like yield i plus 10, or something like that. OK, so let's walk through this. All we have to do is instantiate um, the generator, because the generator calls the other generator. Um, and we'll give it a value like 10. OK, so what this is going to do, I know this looks a little bit wild, but um, I did this wrong, gen equals, yeah, cool. And so now we can do console log gen dot next, and let's say we just want the value out of there. Um, and let's do it five times. Oops. Three, four, five. Okay, so the f when this gets instantiated, it doesn't run. It just sets the state, so it sets i to 10. So it'll run here the first time, and it'll go into this generator function, the first thing it'll do is yield i, right? So it should yield 10. And then it, it takes this i and it passes it to another generator function. So now we come in here and it just yields i plus 1, 2, and 3, but i is still 10 when it comes in here. So then we should see 11, oops, and then 12, and then 13. 
So it yields these three, and when all those yields are complete, it releases control back to generator, and then it yields i plus 10. Uh, so we should see 20. Let's go ahead and make sure I got this right, and then we'll kind of walk through it. So 10, 11, 12, 13, 20. 10, 11, 12, 13, 20. Okay, perfect. So um, this is pretty wild, and it gets into a lot of the advanced use cases of generators, which are doing like a ton of async code, um, passing the flow control from one thing to the next and back really cleanly um, and without a ton of callbacks. Um, so I guess the things to note are a yield with an asterisk is necessary when you're yielding to a different generator. You can do that as many times as you want. Like This could yield to a third generator. Um, when you yield to a generator, you uh, give up con flow control to the next generator until it's done with all of its yield statements. Um, and so, you know, we yield here, and it, this doesn't go right away. This pauses. So it pauses on line 11. It runs all of these lines. And then when this gives control back to generator, it yields again. Um, so I hope that's pretty helpful. There's a lot of great posts. And I'll do some videos on advanced generator usage. But I'm kind of trying to keep them short now because they're just an introduction to ES6. Um, so yeah, I hope that is helpful. The last thing I just wanted to mention is that you need to instantiate it just like a function call. If you were to do something like var gen2 equals new uh, generator uh, with 10, uh, that's going to throw a type error. You can't instant, you can't use them like constructors. That are, they're not constructible. So that's worth noting. Uh, cool. I hope that video helped. If there's anything else uh, specifically you'd like me to cover, please let me know in the comments, and I'll definitely make a video.